Another great day here in Vancouver on Grenville Island. Welcome to Metro Cafe tonight. Yes, we talk to the best kissers in the world. And I get the scoop from actor Paul Johansson. And I do a little mixing with Paul Jans in his own recording studio. And I'll get the dirt on Ira and Fran from Mad About You. Also, we'll catch up with Brian Austin Green from 9021 All. All of this and more coming at you tonight on Metro Cafe. Hello, everybody. Coming up next on Metro Cafe. Leela Kenzel. John Panko. Mad About You, Ira. Watch us, friend. This is Rob McCurry with Metro Cafe. I'm here in Culver City at the Bamboo Cafe with John Panko and Leela Kenzel. Hi. This is Ira and Fran from Mad About You. Yeah. yeah. So tell me, yeah. your character. What's, what's he about? What's Ira about? Ira's about whatever is happening. Ira is cool. <laughs> Ira, you know, you know Ira. I don't know if you know. Maybe you do know Ira. Maybe you don't. Everybody knows an Ira. Ira's just, he likes to have a good time. Very resilient guy. Likes girls, likes women, likes life, likes to eat, likes to drink, likes, you know, I mean, I don't mean he's a drunk or anything, but he, he just likes to live. He's a, he's a very uh, kind of, he likes to, he enjoys himself. Carry it into the back. In the back of the restaurant, did Yeah, the kitchen. In the kitchen? Yeah. So it's like, it's like, like hot and steamy? Very. <laughs> wow. So who started? Well, I started uh, unbuttoning her shirts. And, and what, she does what? She's unbuttoning my shirt. You both standing there without your shirts on? That's right. Wow, she's got she's standing there, she's got no shirt. That's correct. <laughs> so what happens now? One thing leads to another and you know, boom. Has Ira ever gone after Fran? Ira, yeah, Ira and Fran had a little bit of a thing, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. we did. I a little remember bit it well. Of a thing. Well, it was, it was pretty big, I guess. <laughs> this is like yeah. when it gets sensitive. You're little? You said it's a little thing? I thought it was a big thing. We actually slept together. Fanny, how could you be late? It was one time. I mean, it wasn't even in town. What does that have to do with anything? I'm just saying it was in Atlantic City. Well, pal, we might have hit the jackpot. Oh, wow. Hey, you didn't tell them about us, did you? No, no way. Well, that's good. Franny, I'm sorry. Hey. Okie dokie, let's get the show on the road, huh? We don't want to be late. Not a single idea what's going to happen to Fran from one moment to the next. Not a clue. I'm, I'm as anxiously looking forward it's to it. It's kind of exciting that else way. Would be. Yeah, it is. It you is. get the script and you're like... You don't know. Like you asked me earlier, she asked me whether or not I was divorced. Oh my God. Really Are you hungry? The barbecue pasta Who's at this, Bamboo this on Venice yours. Boulevard. Oh, talk about Paul and Helen. They don't just act. They, I mean, we, they go to these meetings after every read-through. They stay. They talk about characters. They pitch storylines. And they are essentially, you know, steering the show, creating the show, both Paul and Helen, I think. You know, we, we're lucky. We, you know, come in. We do our job. They give us this great script. We play cards, and we go home. It's really a grand it's, it's life. It's good life, yeah. Could you be better? Could you got to take your cards on? You really want to Yeah, yeah, here. No, I, but I've got some dice in my pocket. <laughs> good, good. Just shoot a little craps in the corner. <laughs> yeah. I'm here by the pool tonight of the fabulous Mondrian Hotel in Los Angeles with Paul Johansson of many claims to fame. He's done a year on Parker Lewis. He was starred as Sally Field's boyfriend or husband in Soap Dish. Yeah, okay. husband. Love interest. Love interest. Um, of course, John Sears on 90210. So before the camera started rolling, you told me a little story about the Mondrian Hotel, and I think that you should share it with me. Well, actually, my first visit to the Mondrian was um, five years ago when I just I'd moved down here six years ago, almost seven now. From? Uh, from, well, Vancouver. Oh, wow. Boy, what a surprise. Oh, you knew that. A local and, uh, boy. Actually, I think I was living with your brother at the time. 
Uh, I think it was. And uh, I met this girl at the airport, and she was beautiful. And I was like, oh my god. And she said, well, I'm staying. We, we talked, and she gave me her phone number, which was the Monday And then I called, and she said what room she was in. I came like seven o'clock in the morning to surprise her with a big bouquet of roses. Very romantic. Very romantic. I was uh, I was young and very naive. And smitten. <laughs> to say the least, as I walked in there, there was like, the elevators opened in the front lobby and out came this beautiful goddess with three basically black suit men with glasses and this huge stretch limo in front. And as I walked up there with my flowers, uh, some guy hit me off and said, uh, oh, are those for Cindy? And started to tip me. And I was like, uh, no, they're from me. I'm not the delivery boy. And so I <laughs> stuck me aside and told me, you know, call her later on that night. And then I went home and I told my friend and he said, um, he said, well, who is this girl? And I said, oh, her name's Cindy Crawford, and he said, uh, yeah, yeah, right. So you went to 7-Eleven and yeah. saw, a, like, a rack of magazines <laughs> and went, oh, my God, that's her. <laughs> yeah, basically. He took me down there to show me that she was a model I didn't know, and that was kind of the uh, the swing of it. I had no idea who she was. Do you have anything uh, in the can that we can look forward to seeing? Yeah, Are you working on anything Canada, recently? Yeah, there's a thing coming out I did called uh, Midnight Witness. Mm -hmm. um, I basically play a... Uh, a guy who witnesses a police beating, a.k.a. the Rodney King situation, right. and uh, it just uh, was released in Canada in um, January on the video. Now, if you want to see some network comedy, like for CBS or NBC, some sitcoms that are being taped, this is the place to get the tickets for, in front of the Chinese Man Theater on Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood. Just try to find uh, any CBS or NBC rep giving tickets away. I'm John Tev. Oh, you're not John Tesh. No, no, not John Tesh. I'm not tall enough. <laughs> so what are you doing here? You're giving tickets. You're from CBS. Yeah, we've got CBS tickets that we're giving out. And these are for screenings, for pros programming for CBS. And we give folks that come out here from different states that crack at it, tell us what they think of the show and uh, if they like it or not before we actually air it. And uh, they really determine whether or not these shows go on the air or not. You know, it's really important, you know, the screenings. And uh, yeah, they kind of have a little fun doing it too. In a five, four, three, two. Come on, Gregory. Hit open. Great. Change the plans. Great. Bradley Jr. is going to the park with you. Forget it. We're going to the park by ourselves. I forbid it. Forbid? Oh, is that the F word? What, what tickets are you giving for? Uh, what show? Today, today we're giving away tickets for the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, also the Late Show with Greg Sinear and a comedy at Disney Studios called Thunder Alley with Ed Asner. And you would, would you rather give these uh, tickets to people from all across the country rather than people who live in, in Hollywood, kind of? Yeah, definitely. The, if we come here, tourists go to them, because uh, locals, they can come and get them anytime, and they don't use them all the time, you know. If you're from out of town, they'll give them to you, and then you, they'll tell you, come back, you take a shuttle, they take you to the studio, you see the taping, and bam, there you go, you're a studio audience. Oh, no! How you doing? I'm Brian Austin Gray from Beverly Hills 90210, and you're watching Metro Cafe. And if you're gonna drive, don't drink. And if you have to choose between one or the other, drink gasoline. David! If you're a Beverly Hills 90210 fan, here's a character no. we'd like you to meet. David Silver, played by Brian Austin Green. You're funny. And I think that you're very sexy. Wow, uh, what's gotten into you? The Donna and, and uh, David thing. Right. Is it ever going <laughs> to unravel? You know, I don't know. If, if I wrote the scripts, it would have a long time ago, but... Uh, I think they like the fact that it's it's a much younger relationship and, and the younger kids can uh, can relate to it, you know, and it's not so uh, so on the sexual side. But uh, it, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, I'm hoping, you know, fifth year's coming up. I'm hoping something happens soon. Otherwise, I may just have to shoot Dave in the head and call it a day, you know. Okay. Uh, so there's always kind of a moral thing behind every uh, everything you guys, yeah, every subject you treat on the show. Basically, yeah. They all try and uh, they try and cover all the different grounds we can and try and uh, try and stick with what's best, you know, not only for us and our characters but for uh, for the audience watching. So that's why we have a lot of problems with storylines. Now your interest on the show always like you know in, on the radio station the DJing thing is this like a personal thing in your life? Do you, Music thing. The radio thing. Yeah. Well, the radio thing just kind of came about. I don't. I don't even remember how that came up, but I'm, I'm personally working on music, and uh, 
So it's fun. It's interesting. It's a whole different side. I'm working. I'm working on an album right now, and hopefully it should be out this summer. At least the first single will be. So uh, we'll what, see what happens there. What type of music is it? It's hip hop, rap, R and B. I'm I'm working with Babyface. Where do you see Brian Austin Green in, let's say, three or four years? Do you see him going towards the music more, or would you like to stay in the television or feature um, film or whatever? I see myself going a lot more towards music. I'll probably be doing that mostly. But if any good films come up or. Uh, or anything like that, I'll definitely keep it in mind. Hi, it's David Kay. We're at the incredible Starfish in Vancouver, in Yale Town, and this is uh, an album called Been There. And uh, it's Best Kisses in the World, who are our guests today on Metro Cafe. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, Jeff Stone. Yes. And Greg Collier. That's correct. And here's the album. It's called Been There, huh? Yeah. Why is it called Been There? On, because it... On accident, actually. Uh, this was a, down there. Well, yeah, we, we originally wanted it to say beans there, you know, and with an arrow pointing down to some beans that we had spilled on the rug. <laughs> but the label misunderstood. Well, tell me about Miss Teen USA. I, I, who, who wrote that song, and how did you come up with that? This friend of ours said he called us up. It was, I think it was one of our last nights in New York, and said that uh, he had tickets to go to see this Miss Teen USA pageant, and we were like, "Wow, yeah, we're there," you know. And it just turned out to be this bizarre night of. It just nothing made sense. There were like Elvis impersonators and huge like balloons and Barbara Feldon with tabbouleh all over her face and Michael Anthony Hall just drinking like a fish and it was in the Copacabana room in New York City and then when we met her I was just I was never the same after that so kind of had to write that for her so are you in love then no Uh, describe the typical fan that comes to see your show. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. They're more muscular than I am. Uh, the hair is usually shorter. Um, they don't carry weapons, but they like to throw things. I think they frequent McDonald's a lot. In other words, it, in probably the direct antithesis of us is what we get. And those are the old people. Where did you get the name Best Kisses in the World? And if there is, in fact, is there a Best Kisser in the World in the group? Yes, and I'll, I'll tell you where we got the name real quick. It was uh, our old manager's idea. So it's send mail and ask him where we, he got the name. And he'll, he's got a page of these like photocopied explanations, and he'll send you one. Probably with, with a, a picture of himself. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, for stopping by to take a Thank take you. time to chat the Metro Cafe. Thank you, and you. Thank look you, Jeff. Great. Do I look? You, you think so? Look. Hi, Betty Moshe here for Metro Cafe, and we are in front of Mars Nightclub, the latest, hottest night spot here in Vancouver. And uh, there's a fashion extravaganza taking place here tonight. Uh, it's put on by John Casablanca's Fashion and Modeling Schools, and uh, the night has a, some kind of a theme. It's called the Emperor's New Clothes. So we're gonna take you inside and have a look. More and more, Vancouver is grasping a fashion-conscious appeal. There's a certain elegance that distinguishes the city, and recently Mars was the scene of a runway fashion event that grabbed the attention of the Vancouver high fashion crowd. The lineup featured a variety of looks from Vancouver's high-end boutiques. Organized entirely by fashion students and with proceeds going to AIDS Vancouver, one could describe the evening's fashion as gusty, clever, and refreshing. show had a slant on the trends on fashion. So it is for somebody that has maybe a keener eye on fashion, the woman or the man that sort of has that innate feeling for fashion.
The Spring 94 styles range from the basic everyday wear to grunge and alternative, reflecting the clicky cappuccino bar generation. Asked me five years ago, one day you'll be sitting with Paul Jans in his own recording studio. I would say, yeah, right. Here I am. Uh, Paul, I, I just wish I looked as good as you do. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> you look fabulous. What are you talking about? Hey, this is my working gear. <laughs> <laughs> you look amazing. This was the first time that I actually recorded something. Everything was done here. Uh, my previous, my previous record, I did, I think, in eight or nine studios in Los Angeles and in Vancouver. And it it ended up it, it ended up being such a costly affair, um, and basically a, a waste of costs. And that, that that's what I would that's what I would say to you know to the kids who are you know wanting want to do demos and th and things like that. You know there are great systems out there that you don't need to go and spend uh, you know two hundred and fifty dollars an hour. For Paul Jens, writing and recording are made easy due to the serenity and the comfort of his home and studio in Mission, B.C. He credits a part of his inspiration to his wife Elizabeth's collaboration on a couple of his songs. So these things, and she just knows that when I start recording an album, she loses me. And it's, it's basically like I'm, whether I'm home or not, I'm not home. Um, so, but she's, she, has, she has real great, she's always had real great poetic ability and in terms of ideas and expression and emotions. With the Juno and other awards, Paul Jans has packed a string of hit singles under his belt, including Every Little Tear, a number one single from his third album, Renegade Romantic. What, what, what this thing is, and these are all what you call multitask faders. So this, these eight faders right here can actually be tw 24. Uh, so you can go to remote one, and that's this machine. Okay. So you want to hear yourself solo without track? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> so after some sampling, mixing, and some fine tuning, Battery Mugé decided to expand his horizons and try his luck in a flourishing singing career. The final product is this number one remake that'll soon hit the airwaves in heavy rotation. Well, maybe not. This was one take. No overdubs, no nothing. This guy's destined for fame, let me tell you. You need somebody to share that emotion Lonely mountain So far away now I can hold back the rain When it feels like Your soul is breaking I will lift my hand Metro Cafe's movie pick for the week, Thumbelina, an animated retelling of the Hans Christian Andersen storytell classic. Writer, producer, and director of Thumbelina, Don Bluth, says creating the character wasn't easy. You are famous. 
Thumbelina has, has been a very difficult character to design, and, and mainly because there's been so many wonderful female characters. One of the things that was tough about her is that she's, she is very innocent, so you can't give a worldly look to her. You kind of have to give her a look of a little child. And when you do that, you start drawing larger foreheads and smaller chins and all the things that make for a kind of a pudgy little baby face. And then we want to make her just have a little bit of sensuality, just a tiny bit, or the prince is not going to go for her. Of course, she's not alive right now because we have to draw about 150 more of these, making it all move so that she uh, came to life and acted like the young girl that she is. That's Although basically. making the animation come to life Fun needs the skill of an artist, it also requires the assistance of real-life actors. They do some wonderful things that I don't think the artists would actually think of. You know, the whirls and the turns and where they pause and all the wonderful timing that is so um, much a part of the acting world. So the animators then use that. Cornelius! <laughs> well, that's a funny name. Oh, I, I mean it's perfect. Oh, I'll tell him. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <gasps> oh, what was that? Oh, oh, that's Busby, my bumble. See, I the left classic tale of Thumbelina comes to life in theaters long. now. <laughs> Why didn't you say something? Come on! Next week on Metro Cafe, we talk to Gabrielle Carteris about her new talk show series, Life Stories. We'll take you behind the scenes of Hideaway, the new movie starring Jeff Goldblum, and the Cocteau Twins stop in for a visit. All this and more next week on Metro Cafe. And that's it for this week. See you next week on Metro Cafe. Say how about some lunch? Hey, sure. You buy? <laughs>